Christopher was a happy 10-year-old boy. He loved going to school and he loved playing tag at recess. And he was in his second year playing basketball. He liked uh, anything outdoors. And he was um, the second, you know, I had my, my other son is Chad. And then Christopher was, um, was 10 at the time. And then Chad was like 13 and a half. It was a f September Saturday morning. I got to work around seven. I guess the boys must have gone outside after after I left. I got a phone call from my husband around 7.15 a.m. and uh, he said that uh, Christopher was, um, was burnt over 90% of his body and I was to come home right away. So um, on the way there, I was told to go to the soccer field and um, they were gonna life like Christopher to the University of Iowa Burn Center. And only one parent was allowed to ride on the helicopter. So um, I decided that I would ride with Christopher and then my husband was gonna come by car. And w once he got there, they took him to uh, emergency unit and I was supposed to wait into um, like a hospital room. We were told to go into an employee break room and they called my husband on the phone and the doctor said that he wasn't gonna live much longer. I just went in denial because I, I just believed that he was gonna live and that's, you know, the doctor got it wrong. My husband, um, he finally made it there and uh, but Christopher, uh, he passed away about five hours later. really hard on his brother because he was with him um, during the accident. Um, they were just, uh, you know, outside as they always were. And uh, they were just, for some, some reason, they wanted to start a little fire and uh, the traditional way of using a newspaper and just wasn't working because it had rained the night before. So the logs were uh, smoldering out. So Christopher decided he was gonna go into a garage and get an old plastic gasoline container that we had. And he just sprinkled a little gasoline on there, on the fire and not knowing he was standing in a vapor cloud. The embers came in contact with the fumes from that portable gasoline container and that container exploded and showering him with burning gasoline. And my son has to, you know, live with that. Most people know, but don't know, that it's not the liquid, it's the actual vapor that burns, right? And gasoline is a very volatile, or it's a liquid that evaporates very quickly, uh, twice as fast as acetone or nail polish remover, which we're kind of familiar with. Uh, at about 102 degrees, gasoline boils off completely or becomes a vapor, turns from a liquid to a vapor. So very, very, very low temperatures can cause gasoline to produce a lot of vapors. Those vapors can, can travel an extreme distance from where they were originally laid out or where they originally spilled. And if they find an ignition source, will burn all the way back, right? And in this instance, into the container itself, right? Causing uh, uh, what I'm assuming to be a, a, a very, very, very quick expansion because of all that heat and all that combustion. And now we're, uh, uh, we've got flammable liquids and vapors uh, on fire. It, it just takes an ember or a spark or any type of um, a heat source um, that comes in contact with the fumes that's being released from the portable gasoline container. And it causing an explosion. If, there, if we had a safety can equipped with the flame arrester, I strongly believe that this wouldn't happen. Again, I can see how people uh, growing up with gasoline and dealing with gasoline all the time, we've, we've developed this comfort level. I wanted to raise awareness about the dangers of portable gasoline containers. So I contacted Safe Kids 
After Christopher's accident and asked them if they would help me, that is when the legacy of Christopher Alsop Gas Can Exchange was established in 2014. It's an annual event where people can come out and they have a chance to get rid of their you know, old plastic unsafe container. And in return, they will get a safety container equipped with a flame arrestor. Flame arrestor is a small mesh screen that's installed in the nozzle of uh, the portable container. And it keeps that spark from going into the portable fuel container. And what it does is it just eats up the energy of any uh, uh, heat trying to get out or into the container. A flame arrestor on a gasoline tanker is that same basic concept. Again, it's meant to not allow that flame to have enough energy uh, or to absorb that energy so that it can't burn back into that container. Well, they just passed a law um, in 2020, the uh, Portable Fuel Container Act. So going forward, uh, all portable fuel containers are gonna be required to have flame arresters, including the plastic ones. This is the old gas can, and this is the bad part of it. You get gas on, you gotta pull this out and make sure you get it sealed, then open the vent tube up, and then you more or less pour it in. And a lot of times it'll try to leak around here, and then you get gas on you because the only way to get this back in is you got to grab it and push it back in. And that's the old one. Now the newer one that I hadn't seen, like this would be nice because you open up here, you pour in, it's got the vent here and I can just dump it in and I don't have to worry about getting any gas on me. I can see where it's nice because it's flexible because this fuel tank is recessed and that makes it hard to pull them old stiff ones in. The other thing I think that uh, needs to be mentioned is, is it's incredibly important when you're refueling a motor or something that, that uh, uh, does require that gasoline that you make sure you don't do it when it's hot. People again uh, fail to, to connect sometimes that heat right as that ignition source. Uh, most people know but they don't know that gasoline's flash point, meaning the minimum temperature required for get it to give off enough vapors that if an ignition source is present, we're gonna have fire is negative 45 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. So anytime here in the state of Iowa, no matter what the weather conditions are like, gasoline is a flammable material that needs to be respected. Ventilation is important. Plastic gas containers tend to expand with pressure. So I recommend opening a window, uh, especially on a 90 degree day. Also don't leave it out in, in the sun. You know, once you're done with that container, take it back to where it belongs in a safe area. So another way to, uh, to ensure that you're, you're putting in to play as many engineering controls as possible would be to have a separate flammable liquids cabinet. Again, it would be stored in a, in a building that is, is not directly attached to the main residence. They do a couple of different things. First of all, they, they aggregate or collect all of our, our flammables in one area uh, uh, in a fireproof uh, uh, type of locker. Uh, additionally, they've got signage on them that warns people who are going to be around or working in that area that there are flammable liquids in this area and uh, to be cognizant of that. I started the legacy of Christopher Alsa Foundation. And so we can, you know, keep uh, his legacy alive and continue to educate and raise awareness about gasoline safety. I feel the, the need especially in smaller farms where you use gasoline more. And that's what our focus is right now.